Hi friends, good morning. Myself, Dr. Uma Karadan. Today, I would like to introduce the father of neurointervention in India, Professor Shak Hussain Sir. He is my mentor, a great and fabulous teacher. He would be speaking on the revascularization of the carotids when the patient is inflicted with the carotid stenosis getting recurrent strokes. So, over to Shakir sir. Thank you. In uh, this case, in this procedure, we first uh, uh, pass a wire across uh, like this uh, into the distal part of the carotid artery and after passing the wire, we deploy this stent across. This is uh, that you can see that stent deployment has happened here and the pseudo aneurysm is now no more filling. Uh, there is enlargement of the diameter over here. And uh, furthermore, what we do is we put a balloon here and we enlarge this balloon and uh, inflate it and uh, dilate the artery. So, with this, uh, the artery becomes completely normal uh, as you can appreciate here. And we also see the intracranial circulation that there is no embolism has happened or no clot has gone into the brain artery. And uh, finally, what we achieve the result is uh, like this. The artery which was actually narrow and there was pseudo aneurysm is the artery is completely remodeled and this is called a completion of a result with the carotid standing and angioplasty. My name is uh, Shakir Hussain and I am an interventional neurologist at the Baby Memorial Hospital in Calicut. So today we will be talking about uh, uh, carotid artery disease which is one of the reasons for uh, the stroke which is uh, commonly seen in relatively young patients in our population. So as we all know that the stroke is a disease of the brain arteries where the clot usually goes either from the heart or commonly from the artery which is going to the brain which is called the carotid artery which is in the neck portion uh, commonly affected by the process called atherosclerotic disease. And this atherosclerotic disease is uh, uh, quite similar to what uh, commonly you see in, uh, in uh, myocardial infarction or heart attack. Uh, it involves the coronary arteries, so it causes a myocardial infarction. So when the clot happens into the brain arteries, um, it blocks the brain artery and it causes a acute stroke. And because the brain performs different functions, uh, some function of the brain are lost and commonly what we see is a one side paralysis or sudden loss of speech or sudden difficulty in uh, seeing one side of the, uh, of the field, uh, etc. or sometimes sudden onset of consciousness. So they are all reflection of the, of the stroke and the stroke is a major dreaded disease because it does not actually only cause the loss of life but it causes uh, morbidity or disability. And if it happens to a person who is young and a relatively uh, bread earner of the family, <coughs> it, the patient loses vocational ability and it leads to uh, a bigger problem of, uh, of the family and the socioeconomic uh, problem to the, to the state even uh, eventually. So this is very important because uh, the commonest reasons for the stroke uh, of, is, is atherosclerotic disease of the carotid arteries and the, uh, some of the risk factors which are uh, common to formation of this atherosclerotic disease in relatively younger population. So atherosclerosis is an uh, aging process. It happens otherwise also in every individual. Uh, but commonly we see this process uh, in its severe form in 80 and 90 or 100 years of age. But what is happening today is that because of our modern lifestyle which is not healthy, uh, this problem is happening in much younger population which is uh, at 40, 50 and 60 years of age. So what are the risk factors? The common risk factors that we see are the smoking, uh, stress, anxiety and stress, work stress or uh, mental stress of uh, different types which uh, in a modern society that we are prevailing uh, a competitive world, it generates a lot of anxiety and that leads to the stress and uh, uh, not adequacy of the life and relaxation. Uh, Another important factors are the diabetes which is again a preventable disease or modifiable disease and hypertension which is commonly again linked to the 
uh, anxiety state and stress factors apart from the secondary causes of the hypertension which are completely because of uh, different problems uh, also creates a risk factor for development of atherosclerotic disease. Now what the, what the most important factor that we have seen is the lifestyle and among the lifestyle the sedentary life habits, sedentary lifestyle when we are eating but not walking. The we are locomotor people, we our the God has given us you know the, the limbs uh, and the strength in the muscle just because we can mobilize, we can walk for our survival and our maintenance of the health. And unfortunately as we are becoming dependent on the higher technology, uh, especially the smartphone technology and computer technology, we are becoming more confined to the to the chairs and confined to the couches and that is the biggest problem. So in the lifestyle a good physical activity of the day uh, walking, gymming or cycling or swimming or some sort of the thing should be performed or uh, other important factor is the dietary factor. That in the dietary factor we are more and more moving to the fast food which is a relatively predominantly carbohydrate and, uh, and a fried food which again predisposes to atherogenicity of the blood vessels. So I think in a larger perspective if you look at uh, you know uh, we have uh, so many uh, aspects of you know the preventive nature which we can if we focus upon we can actually prevent the disease and even if it happens in a in a in some individual because they are predisposed because of their genetic predisposition or some other environmental factor then Today we have actually a very good means to find out whether there is a blockage in the brain arteries and the commonest simple investigation is to perform a carotid Doppler study. Now when we perform a carotid Doppler study and if you find a blockage if it is more than 80 percent and even if it is not causing a problem it should be addressed that it can be opened up in time in a very simplistic way by means of doing a carotid stenting and a carotid angioplasty. Now more importantly sometimes the patient have a transient ischemic episodes what we call it is a sudden onset transient loss of function in one side of the body which sometimes last for let us say few seconds or a minute and here you shake hand and you sit down and uh, you massage little bit and you get a power again and often we ignore this symptom then this is the most important warning sign the nature gives us it is called sentinel stroke. So in this situation if you do a carotid Doppler examination and if you find there is a high degree blockage more than 70 percent or if the atherosclerotic plaque which is usually seen in a carotid bifurcation if it is a ulcerated plaque then it is a strong candidate for disease modification by either by surgery which we do by endotrectomy or uh, commonly nowadays we do under local anesthesia a daycare procedure in the form of carotid stenting. So these are the things which I think uh, has uh, tremendous, tremendously benefited uh, our current generation of people because on one side we are becoming modern and exposing ourselves to the high risk of the problem in early stage and on the other side we are of, of course we are advancing on the, the technology and uh, we have easy solution for these things. Uh, you can look at here in this case is a case of carotid stenosis here responsible for the stroke in this patient. Uh, you can see that there is a narrowing in the artery in this part. It is normal here and normal here but this is uh, uh, ulcerated plaque a pseudoneurism here. So when you have a, a problem like this it uh, repeated it causes repeated stroke so we can deal with by carotid angioplasty and stenting. So how we do it? In uh, this case in this procedure we first uh, uh, pass a wire across uh, like this uh, into the distal part of the carotid artery and after passing the wire we deploy this stent across this is uh, that you can see that stent deployment has happened here and the pseudoaneurysm is now no more filling uh, there is enlargement of the diameter over here and uh, furthermore what we do is we put a balloon here and we enlarge this balloon and uh, inflate it and uh, dilate the artery. So with this uh, the artery becomes completely normal uh, as you can appreciate here and we also see the intracranial circulation that there is no embolism has happened or no clot has gone into the brain artery. And uh, finally what we achieve the result is uh, like this the artery which was actually narrow 
and there was pseudo aneurysm is the artery is completely remodeled and this is called a uh, completion of a result with the carotid stenting and angioplasty so so the best part is that uh, we should make a balance between uh, our lifestyle and the uh, use of the current technology and uh, i mean largely speaking as a, as a physician i would uh, like to advise as a general to the general population that we should embark on to the healthy lifestyle because the, the healthy lifestyle so called healthy lifestyle or lifestyle modification is a continuous phenomena is a phenomena that we we incorporate into our mind as a program and it is to be performed repetitively again and again and again every day so as to achieve the end result at something like 60 years later or 80 years later the benefit of benefit of it it is like a fixed deposit so we should modify more into the we should invest more into the fixed deposit in the form of lifestyle modification uh, living a healthy lifestyle preventing risk factors or modifying our risk factors in time and if at all it happens uh, we can use the current methods of uh, easy uh, what you call relatively low risk procedures of carotid stenting and we can we can salvage this situation so i hope that this uh, this communication would be of uh, of a help to to understand and uh, to, to encourage you to live a, a good life and a healthy uh, life without morbidity or without disability thank you